So this morning, I'm at Stonehenge. I've slept here on what's called the Drove, which is this track where lots of camper vans come to. See my vans up there on the right hand side. This was packed yesterday evening when I got here. You pretty much couldn't move for camper vans. It's quietened off a bit now. It's not so sunny, unfortunately. I'm not sure how well the stones are going to come out on this, but let's see if I can zoom in. Right, so here's the entrance to Stonehenge, which is up here. You can see there's a path here. And this path lets me see the stones for free. Here, by the way, you can see out in the distance there, it's all the camper vans that park up. And further up the top there. So in a minute we'll um, we'll see that the, the view of the stones that I can get for free compared to the view of the stones you get if you've paid. Uh, and I'll have a little look and um, see how much the prices are. Um, just so you know, the uh, Stonehenge Vista Centre, way, way over the back there, miles away. So what they do is they use these coaches to bring people down maybe to justify the uh, the high price. But uh, I'm not convinced it's the most environmentally friendly way of dealing with it, but there you go. So you can see when my path is here and that path is there. So there's not really a huge difference between us. Obviously, that path there goes up a bit closer to the stones. So there we go, there's the stones. As you can see, part of the, uh, part of the walk is right next to me. And another part there that just takes you around the other side of the stones. you'll see that um, you can't touch the stones. Uh, I have, um, you can touch them on uh, um, summer solstice. That's the only time that you can actually get in there and put your hands on those stones. There you've got one of these uh, I'm not sure what this stone is, whether it was some entrance stone or some sort of sacrificial stone, I'm not sure. You can see the big arrow. We see it's for the sunrise. And there you can see some of the vans parked up on the drove. I've zoomed in. It's busy. So, there we go. That was Stonehenge. I'm going to have a wander back to the van now. Um, but, uh, yeah, this is where I sleep sometimes. It's quite nice. Nice and quiet up here in the evenings. It's free, obviously. Um, and you don't always want to be parked up uh, on the street somewhere. Um, so yeah, it's good. Surprised how busy it is this morning. But uh, yeah, it's got a lot of people up here. Uh, it's not super warm either. But there we go. So the stones here have uh, security guards. Um, they're here 24 hours a day. Seven days a week, 365 days a year. 
um, and they patrol the area at night with torches to stop people from jumping over the fence and touching the stones. I often joke with them if I see them in the morning. Let's make sure that no one's stolen them. Yeah, you can see where the coach loads come in. So there's a lot of people here now. But again, it's uh, Easter weekend. And yeah, another coach full of people. It's just a sort of relentless one in, one out, one in, one out. Big business now, the stones. So you've got a choice when you come here. You can either pay, go to the visitor centre and um, get the bus down here and uh, have a look at the stones. Or you can park up on the drove for free. See the stones for free. And another one. The tree of coach has just dropped off. And then another one's just about to drop off. <coughs> As I say, visitor centre, right back down that road there. Quite a nice visitor centre. Let me see how much the uh, price is on the tickets here. Right. I'm now in. I'm now the other side of the fence. Which uh, you wouldn't normally be allowed to do. But via some National Trust membership, I'm taking a wander in. Right, so if you're a National Trust member, you can get in for free. It's not entirely free because um, you pay the National Trust membership, but uh, this is um, run by English Heritage, but they honour National Trust. So, now I'm in with the tourists. So let's have a little look. See what the tourists can see. So as I said, it's pretty busy. Oh, you got your fake police here as well, look. So, do I think that Stonehenge is better? Or Avery is better? Well, Avery's bigger. Um, yeah, I don't know, I like them both, I think. I like the scale of Avery. But at the same time, I quite like That's the, uh, the way it's set up here. Super busy. Like crazy, crazy busy. So, see the little path here, little fence. The stones, so you can get, you can get pretty close. I'm not complaining. Right, so there you go, that was the stones. I'll just have a little wander around this uh, outside path now so that you can see uh, the stones from a slightly different angle. So there you go, this is the view from the other side. No special path here, we're just walking on the grass but we've still got this little bit of rope to keep us out. I don't know if you realise, but it's a road there. You can see the vehicles maybe in the distance. There's talk of them tunnelling under here. Yes, yeah, so all the cars slow down on the road to get a little look at Stonehenge. 
of course that then causes traffic and also it goes from a dual carriageway to a single carriageway along here so losing a lane and then everyone slowing down means that things can get pretty busy but I don't know how far they've come with the um, with the whole plan to, to tunnel underneath I think there was a fair bit of uh, opposition because around here you've got sort of burial mounds uh, one I can see in front of me so yeah so there's the road I don't know if you can make out in front there's a little mound here all right let's see if we can see this mound just there there's lots of those right and then there's the view where i am now a bit less touristy this side but you're much further away from the stones so we're now going to come round to where this stone was and there was the arrow on the floor showing you the uh, sunrise midsummer sunrise arrow so i was just there And there you go, there's the stones. They're pretty good, aren't they? Alright, I think I need to go back to the van for a cup of tea. It's quite cold. So this is a shame. From the looks of things, that's not someone with a camper van. So yeah, so I just saw a, a big pile of rubbish. I was just talking to someone. It's um, it's none of, none of the vans. Just someone's come down here and fly tipped. The only thing is, is the uh, the vans probably get blamed for it because uh, people see all the vans up here and caravans, and uh, and just presume that uh, they've just dumped their rubbish here. But for the most part, most people in vans are the exact opposite. I'll tidy up other people's rubbish. Anyway, I'm back at the van, time for a cup of tea. Right, I am going to take you for a, um, a little drive down the drove so you can see the track that I'm on about. So there's the main road. There's my van and the drove, so let's have a look. So I'm going to have to go slowly because this is really, really bumpy. So if you're precious about your van, don't come here because some of these potholes are just so deep. Here we go, We've got bits of all sorts here. Old vans, new vans, expensive vans. What looks like an old library van there that's been converted. I don't know if it's coming across on camera just how off-road this is. Posse of vans here, these three. Someone's caravan, worryingly with no car.
Now the caravan here with a car. I wouldn't want to bring a caravan down here myself, but there you go. T4, with nice banded wheels, I like that. An off-road to Cato, that looks nice. Just up ahead, I can see the uh, coaches. see that this drove cuts across where the coaches come in. What have we got here? Someone selling coffee, tea and hot chocolate. That's a good idea. Business on the go. So now there's a, a sort of continuation of the drove past Stonehenge which came out in the footage earlier and there's a load of ants down here firstly I'm going to get through this lake we've had a lot of rain recently so uh, this is probably about its worst I think well that I've seen anyway Now there's a coach up here, and I've met this guy in the coach before, and had a little chat with him. I don't think I'd want the, uh, the fuel running costs of uh, driving a sodding great coach around. Oh, that's a different coach. No, that's not the guy I was thinking of at all. See, so you get some old coach and then you get a 67 plate VW camp fan. Now that's bad. That's bad. The rubbish that's been left there. Now me saying earlier that the camper van lot don't leave rubbish and, and the other stuff was fly tipped, but I'm not convinced that's fly tipped rubbish. I think that someone stayed down here and just left their rubbish. <clears throat> and that'll get this place closed off, I think. If too many people come down here and just leave a mess, then the council will find an excuse to shut it. And then no one will be able to come down here. Anyway, this end is uh, what I would describe as the less, less touristy end. So what where I was parked, you'll often get camper vans that have come here from abroad they've found the place on park for night and they park up there because they're close to the stones from this end you're that much further away from the stones and well I don't know what how to describe it down here just sort of sometimes it's a free camping rave area It's not a bad thing. I'm gonna come down here on a Friday or a Saturday night and have a little campfire and put your music on, have a few beers. This caravan here as well, and I'm not sure whether 
having a caravan down here is a good idea. Again, I think if anything's going to upset the council, it's going to be people staying down here for long periods of time in caravans. Oh, someone in the tent. That was probably a bit chilly last night. And yeah, just a oh, couple more caravans and a camper van. And then that's it. So this track will then continue up to Lark Hill. Lark Hill, I think it's called. It's the uh, sort of a, a military uh, base. So I'll let you see a little bit of this. Because uh, you can come to the drove from this way. Last night I came in from the 303 end. Um, but as I say, I'm going to leave this way. So there's uh, some big ruts in this uh, in this little track. This is pretty bumpy. So yeah, if you're uh, if you're in a T4 and it's lowered, then uh, I would not think about bringing it down here. Now it's been a while since I've been this way, so uh, I'm really hoping I don't find a locked gate or something silly and have to turn around and go all the way back. Uh, and this is really quite off-road, but very nice. Oh, and I haven't managed to get out of first gear for the whole drive so far. But not much further to go, and I'll be in civilization. That was a big lump. And there we have it, that was the drove. We're now coming out into, as I say, Lark Hill, I think it is. And there's accommodation over there. And we're back in civilization. Willoughby Road. I'll, um, I'll dig out the uh, What Three Words location so that uh, you can see if you want to come in this way. But just houses. Anyway, better stop filming because I think this is all military. <laughs>